As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They found Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, have you no answer? And how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release the prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebel who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. And what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. They Hail, King of the him. Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by cried at him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You would destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests along with the scribes were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry, 
and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. I would like to invite everyone who is 12 and under to join me here. Here. Come here. Sit down, crisscross out the cell, please. Sit down, crisscross out the cell, please. Those who are younger in heart are also welcome to scoot towards the middle so you can see better. Come on. You don't have to if you don't want to. That's okay. Sit down, Chris. Rock out the side. I have a bag of goodies here today that help me. Tell our story that we kind of started acting out already. What did we do? What was the first thing we did this morning? What did we do? We paraded around the church because today is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is the beginning of what we call Holy Week, which is a special week. One, because that's eight days instead of just seven. And it's a whole week of special things to help us remember what Jesus did. We celebrate the life of Jesus in these special meals and special things that happened in these very last days of his life because Jesus was really special. But he wasn't special like a normal celebrity that we know of. Do you know any famous people? Who do you know that's famous? What do you know of? Have you heard of anybody on TV? George Washington was famous. Alexander Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton. Is there anybody still alive that you know? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the president right now? Hold your Joe Biden. Yeah. What about famous movie stars or musicians or football players? Wow. Who's famous, guys? <laughs> Taylor Swift. Who else? Yeah. Who said that? Jack Prescott. Absolutely. Good football player. Anyone else we know who's famous? Famous people, generally, that we know of, the people we think of as celebrities, have like fancy food, fancy clothes. What else do famous people have? <laughs> Big houses, maybe bodyguards, lots of money. Yeah, they didn't even have helicopters to get where they want to go, or their own planes, or ships. Yeah, special leaders, famous people, and celebrities, even a long time ago, got treated extra special because they were celebrities with all their fancy things. And in Jesus' time, people had waited a really long time for a special ruler that God had promised was coming. God had said a king was coming, and people have ideas of what a king is supposed to do and look like. This king is supposed to rescue and make your life better. And the people of God, they've been bullied around a lot. They've been pushed around. And people who were in charge of them were not necessarily very nice. And so they wanted this king who would gallop in on a horse, because they didn't have helicopters then, and he would kick out those oppressors. They wanted a king who would come and be famous, and he would force all those other people out. But that's not what we saw about Jesus this morning, is it? Jesus wasn't born in a palace. He was born just in a regular place. And he didn't come in the city on a horse. What did he come in on? A donkey. Can you imagine somebody riding Daisy the donkey? He came really gently with peace and with kindness. 
And so when we celebrate Palm Sunday, when Jesus rode a donkey into Jerusalem, and the crowds honored him saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes. Everybody was really excited, but it was not what they expected. It was not a regular, famous person. You have your palm branches this morning? You don't have any now, right? But our story does not end with the donkey and the palm branches. Jesus had a special dinner with his followers right before he died. And he did something that was really strange, especially for a famous person. He washed their feet. Now, what do you know about feet? Yeah, they're stinky. They're kind of dirty. Normally, washing people's feet or their hands or their faces, that's a job for servants. That's a job for people who get paid to take care of us because, like you said, it's pretty smelly. But Jesus wanted to show them that he didn't come to be served. He came to serve others. He was the servant. And I don't think today would be a good day to wash all your feet, but I did bring hand sanitizer, especially if you petted the donkey. Would you like a little hand sanitizer? Thank you. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We wash our hands. A little closer. A little closer. Do you want some When they sat down with Jesus, they had clean hands and clean feet, but not because the servant washed them, because Jesus acted like a servant. And, watched it. and during dinner, Jesus shared his food with the people, but it wasn't fancy people food that nobody can get unless you have a lot of money and you're really rich. It was just regular people's food. It was just bread and wine. He told his friends that whenever they got together and had some bread and wine and ate together, that they should remember. Oh, it's very funny. They should remember Jesus. Do I smell the bread? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's not just a cream, but it doesn't have any nuts or anything. Okay. Jesus said, whenever you have bread and wine, you come together and remember just how regular this food is. It's nothing fancy. Or special, but in a way it's very fancy and special because it's what we have when we have Jesus. Okay. You want a little bread pit? Yes. Hi. He shared his bread with them. That made them happy. Make it happy. And I bet probably it even had some stuff to put on the bread, but I didn't bring that today. Then after supper, the story gets a little sad. Jesus and his disciples go to a special place to a garden, and some soldiers come to arrest Jesus, and they come with swords and with spears. <laughs> now, Jesus was prepared. He knew that they were coming, and he offered himself up to the soldiers so that nobody of his friends or followers could get hurt. He stood in front, and he said, here I am. I knew you were looking for. Jesus knew that it was going to hurt, that those guys were going to hurt him, but he went anyway. And that's kind of surprising. Jesus didn't have bodyguards like a famous person. He didn't have swords or spears. He just went by himself. Jesus showed such a different way to have power and might. He showed it with love. And his friends were really sad and really afraid. Have you ever been sad? 
Have you ever been afraid? Yes, you have. <laughs> Jesus was killed on a cross. That's not the process here. Jesus was killed on a cross, and it was very, very sad. Very, very sad. Most stories, when we read a story, they start out with some sort of problem and then they have a happy ending. But today our story has a sad ending. It ends with Jesus dying. But you know what? Even though this story has a sad ending, there's still some happy bits in it. You ready to hear? Right here? There's still some good news. Because the cross, have you seen people wear necklaces that have a cross on them? Maybe you have one? Yeah. You have a cross necklace? Yeah, of course. You wear a cross? See, we wear a cross even though it's such a sad thing that kills Jesus. But we wear it, but we can remember that even on our worst days, Jesus has been there with us. Jesus has been all the places we say, yes. He's in the air. Yeah. So even on days when we're really sad, we know Jesus is there. And on days when we're scared, Jesus is there. And even when those we love die, Jesus was there. Jesus is there. When we look for Jesus, we will always find him. Hooray for Jesus! <laughs> now you say it. Hooray for Jesus! Say it again. Hooray for Jesus! Say it one more time. Hooray for Jesus! All right, now we're going to say our prayers with Miss Clara. Hooray for Jesus! 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 Hooray